Mark, a truly pathetic deal. That's the verdict on the Prime Minister's EU negotiations from the UKIP leader, Nigel Farage, as you might rather expect. He joins me now. And a very good morning good to morning. you, Mr Farage. I want to start asking you uh, first off, are you going to debate Alex Salmond on this programme? He threw down the gauntlet to me I know he did. To yeah. last week. Well, the other week I was challenged by the First Minister of Wales, Carwin Jones, to go down to Cardiff and debate with him, which I did. Uh, and I'm very keen to debate Nicola Sturgeon. She is the First so, Minister. Sorry, no, Alex Salmond it was. Uh, well, was Alex Salmond was a very, very big figure. I mean, he was, he was the um, you know, leader in the referendum campaign. I mean, he's not even leader of the SNP in, in uh, Westminster. So, look, the deal is... So you think he's been I'll say, I'll say, I'll say yes to Alex Salmond and Nicola Sturgeon. Let's have, you know, a couple on each side and let's do a big Scottish debate. But not just Alex Salmond on his own. Well, I mean, I, 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 that, that's who, that's who well, we've got. I would like to extend... I, I would like really, to extend... You both articulate the arguments very well. It would be very I, I good for the audience to I would love to debate Nicola Sturgeon, absolutely. She's the one in the seat. She's the one in this campaign making the big arguments in Scotland, I'd like to debate. So you're that. turning down Alex Salmond, let's just be clear about I'm that. asking Nicola Sturgeon whether she would like to do a debate. Now, if she turns me down, I'll consider very seriously the Alex Well, OK, I'll have one more go. Let's just see what Alex Salmond, uh, let's see Alex Salmond uh, offering you the challenge there. I'll be delighted to, to take on Mr Farage or, or any comer in the, in the anti-European side. I mean, I don't know if they've quite decided who they'll be fielding yet, and they seem to have spent a lot of time fighting with each other. That's the sort of folk thought they are. But yes, of course, you, you, you debate all comers in a, a referendum campaign. So, not head to head with Alex I didn't know he was leading the SNP campaign. I thought Nicola Sturgeon was. Anyway, there we are. I'm very happy to go to Edinburgh or Glasgow or Inverness no, here, or anywhere here. else. Oh, no, we've got to do it in Scotland. Oh, all right, then. Well, there we are. Well, Alex Hammond, you, <laughs> you can come to Scotland. And you're on your own there. I mean, he made an interesting point there, Alex Hammond. Who is leading the campaign? Hopefully, say, hopefully, no, hopefully no one individual, because if one individual leads it, it will be a disaster. There is this, if you read today's newspapers and listen to today's debate, you would think the only people eligible to vote in this referendum are Conservative voters. It is balderdash. 80% of those eligible to vote in a general election did not vote Conservative. There are millions of non-voters out there that are interested in this issue, and everyone's forgotten about the trade union movement, about Labour. You know, we, to win this referendum, we need different messengers to reach different parts of the electorate. So you're quite happy. I mean, you know, they regard you as toxic, don't they, the Conservative Party? Of course. You know, they, they don't want to have anything to do with No, them. Lord, no. I'm beneath them. I'm far too common to have anything to do with them. I mean, I understand that. Look, there are lots of people in the Conservative Party that will share platforms with me and have done over the last few weeks. And, and I think we're going to see... I think we're going to see um, an out campaign with lots and lots of different individuals representing the full rainbow spectrum of British politics, and that's exactly as it should be. We saw on Friday night. What did you discuss with uh, George Galloway? Um, did you share your views on Iran together? Uh, we didn't go through Israel. We didn't go through economic policy. In fact, if we'd discussed almost anything in UKIP's um, manifesto last year, we'd have had a very hard time. Did you ask him to join the UKIP and, Friends and of he Israel, was, And he was, uh, well, quite. He, he was very disobliging about me last year, I mean, in, in quite personal terms. But here's the point. George Galloway and I disagree fundamentally, but we agree on the single most important political question we will face in our lifetimes. Namely, are we to get back our independence and but, our self-control? <coughs> I mean, and if you, people you, you aren't You talk about enough, the public meetings you're going to, do you think it cancels, it cancels it out? Because, you know, you are Marmite politicians to, to different sides within the debate. Well, well, do you think then people are looking why at Why don't you, you represent this uh, People are looking at you and George Galloway and going, right, OK, well... I, I, don't want to touch Nigel Farage but with a barge pole, but I will vote for George Galloway and the other way around. And we had Sir Bill Cash on the platform. Oh, doesn't it, and we doesn't had, it make people And we had Ruth Lee, the economist, on the platform. And we had Kate Hoey, the Labour uh, MP, on the platform. And we had a dozen speakers on that platform representing mm. a huge range of different political families. And what we've done is to sign a pledge. And the pledge is we cast aside all differences all previous quarrels for this period of the referendum to put the national interest first. But do would you, you do it again? What do, what do you, you know, make? The best what do you make world? when you see those photographs in the paper of him with his, yeah. uh, his trilby on or whatever yeah. it is and you beaming into his eyes there? Would well, you do that again? With the best will in the world, I could try as hard as I like. I don't think I've got a great pull amongst the Muslim community in this country, but George does. George actually speaks to that community. He also speaks to a lot of people who at the moment are Remain voters, and as we saw in the Scottish referendum, he's a powerful debater. He is a big figure on the left of British politics, and he will do what he does, and I will do what I do, and I would encourage people to grow up, to get beyond tribalism, to get beyond the pettiness 
uh, that poisons our politics most, most, most weeks of the year and to say, if we believe in this country, we must all work together. And what's your take on Boris Johnson? Do you think he's going to, going to join him perhaps? Uh Join you on one of those platforms, just having a look at that photograph there. He's, he's got some interesting hats to wear as well. Do you, I mean, do you think Boris Johnson is going to come over? Yes, I do, actually. Based on any information beyond instinct? <coughs> I did just chat to his sister, but she wasn't giving anything away. <laughs> no, I chatted I mean, I, <laughs> Look, I, I think he will, um, and hurrah is all I can say to that. Because what, again, I think uh, a lot of the commentary in Westminster don't understand is there are literally only five or six people in this referendum, whose campaigning, uh, whose, whose presence can sway the undecideds. And he is one and of those half a dozen. And if he comes in on that side, do you think it would destroy the Prime Minister if he wins? I don't care about that. I don't, well, you don't like the Prime Minister. I you, don't, you, you, I'm not interested in political parties. I'm not interested in the Prime Minister. I'm interested in winning this referendum. And I think, again, too much of this debate is about positioning, what happens afterwards. Let's just try and win the referendum. That's all I care about. And it's, it's often said, you know, whichever the result, uh, whichever way it falls, it's the end of your party, isn't it? I mean, it's really a single-issue party. I mean, if you... If you get out, then you've achieved it. And uh, if we're in, we're in for generations to come. There's no point in UKIP. Uh, I repeat the point. I want to win the referendum. You can speculate all you like about what will happen in the next few years. The fact is, if we vote to leave, uh, we then need to make sure that the British government carries out the will of the people. And I say that because the Danes voted against Maastricht and were forced to vote again. Twice the Irish have voted against treaties mm. and they were forced to vote again. And the French and Dutch torpedoed. The, the European constitution, and yet it was introduced through what, the back door. So actually, UKIP will need to be very strong to make sure they carry out the will of the people. Just, you mentioned there the Irish. I mean, you know, there's obviously special uh, arrangements between the UK mm. and Ireland and its uh, citizens who live here being able to vote in general elections. They're going to be able to vote in this EU mm. referendum. They're having a general election, of course, uh, yeah. in Ireland next week. I was over there recently and uh, you've got the, the T-shirt, the Prime Minister, they're urging all Irish people in the UK to vote to remain. Yeah. What well, he would do. I mean, he is, he is completely sold on the European... Well, do you think these EU nationals should have the vote? ...project? Well, Ireland's different. Ireland's completely different. Our history, our shared relationship, the fact that since 1921 we've had, you know, our own special deal. It, 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 it's not comparable to Bulgaria or Hungary or anywhere else. It just isn't comparable. Uh, but, but, I mean, look, the Irish political class are completely sold out on the European project. They signed up to the Euro, which has been a disaster for them, and yet... The Irish people are, are pretty... I'll tell you what, they're as Eurosceptic as we are. And just uh, well, one other thing on eligibility to vote. I mean, I read the other day, it was interesting, maybe you saw it as well, that uh, British embassies uh, within the European Union, Italy and uh, France, were mentioned encouraging people, expats, British expats, to sign up to vote. Do you read uh, something more into that? Well, the Foreign Office isn't neutral. I mean, the Foreign Office has been campaigning for the European Union now for decades. Um, I have to work with them occasionally in Brussels. There is no attempt at civil service neutrality. Uh, they will do what they can to help their friend, the Prime Minister. OK, Nigel Farage, UKIP thank leader, you. thank you very much indeed.